My sermon title for this evening is, What Do You Desire? What do you desire? Mark chapter 11, please. We're going to read verse 24. We're going to read just one verse tonight. And I want to give you uh, a just a um, uh, definition, one definition, Mark 11, verse 24. And uh, are you there? Say amen. It says, therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye, what's the next word? Pray. Pray. Believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Whatsoever ye things ye desire, when ye pray. Wow, what a statement. It is okay to desire certain things. The word desire here simply means to call for, to crave, or to require. Do you know you don't require a banana split to live? How many people like, Cole, do you like banana splits? Amen. What red-blooded Canadian man does not like banana splits? Man, how many people like banana split? Raise your hand. God bless you. How many people like steak? Amen. Okay, so let's say Freddie's taking us out because he got a really big award on tonight, and he's taking us out for at his work. He got a big award, and he's taking us all out for dinner. And he says, "Wherever you, whatever you want to go, wherever you want to go, I'll take you." Ruth Crisp Steakhouse. Thank you, Freddie. God bless you. A steak this size is $70. You ever, how many people have ever had a Ruth's Chris steak, house steak? I've had one. Um, uh, my, my former boss took me out there to eat when they first opened. Is it worth the $70? Honestly, yes. It is, pri- it is cooked per to perfection. So, Freddie, thank you for taking us all out to Ruth Chris Steakhouse tonight. Um, No, he's not, but amen. (laughs) Are you? No. Um, But do I need that to live? It is the same size as a steak as you can get at Walmart, those Angus steaks, the big bucket for a big box of steaks for 20 bucks or $25, and if you cook them right, you'll, you know, it's a good thing. Now, Annalisa, she wouldn't want to go because she does not like steak. It has to be cooked perfect. She's such a, a prim and proper person. But the key here to getting what we want or what we desire is prayer. It's all right to be a pro ball player. It's all right, but is it what God wants you to do? It's all right to be a pro hockey player, but is it all right to be... Uh, what, what you want you to do. It's all right to work, to desire to work at where you work, but is it what God wants you to do? You know, and, and, and so often we rationalize, oh, so often we rationalize our bills to where we work. Whatever you desire, you ought to pray. Lord, is it, is it your will? Lord, is it your will for me to be a pro basketball player, hockey player, baseball player, work at where I work. Um, And and, and again, all too often with our work, when it comes to our work, we we say, look at our bills and say, I can't afford to go somewhere else. And it might be God's will for you to go somewhere else. Thank you, Cole. (laughs) And Cole says that because he's not working. But you know what? For working people, it's scary. Mm-hmm. It, it, Freddie has a, a car to pay for, a van to pay for. He has, he has kids' schooling to pay for. He has a whole bunch of bills to pay for. He has Malou's um, uh, addiction to yard selling uh, pay, to pay for. Uh, by the way, when is the Burford yard sale? Amen. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and, and she's out there early in the morning and she's out there and she has, buys, I think, 85 rice cookers every day at the time she goes out. Any rice cooker. She could have 40 in there. And I love Malou. I always tease her on that one. Uh, she doesn't have 85. How many, she, what's the most she's ever had? 
uh, 15. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, but if, 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 Freddie, if God said, go tomorrow and quit your job, not knowing where your next meal's coming from, your next dollar to come from, be hard, wouldn't it? Sarah, if God said, you know, go in tomorrow and said, you quit your job. It'd be hard, but the just shall live by paycheck. The just shall live by faith. If God orders us to do something, we ought to do it. What do you desire? Do you desire to be more like Christ? Again, the Bible says, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And oftentimes we don't want to grow. Uh, we don't want to grow. And God says it's okay to desire. Again, in our text, it says whatsoever thing ye desire or, or desire the sincere milk of the word. He commands us to desire things, but are everything that we want, we desire good for us? I really right now desire a baked potato with dripping with butter and sour cream and chives with little bits of bacon on top and a 24 ounce steak cooked to perfection with sauteed mushrooms and a big piece of pecan pie. Amen. No greens, no vegetables, and a big, tall glass of iced tea. Mm. And on that pecan pie, to top it, a piece of apple pie. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. Amen. but that's not what's good for me. Amen? It's not good for my health. What do you desire? Is it good for your spiritual health? I desire the 40,000 fans going, chanting my name. <sighs> or I desire... The accolades at work. And I know you gave God all the glory and that, that's the right attitude. And that's, that's what you ought to do. And, and Freddie, you had the greatest attitude. I was so glad that you did. Do you desire that? Or do you desire just to be used of God? This is our church. We have a handful of people here tonight. We meet in an upper conference room and that's okay. It's not the size that matters. You know, there's some pretty big churches out there that God says, nah. There's some, and I'm talking independent, fundamental Baptist church that God said, I'm going to write Ichabod on the door because I'm not there. I'm not welcome. I'm not welcome in the life of the pastor. I'm not welcome in the life of the people. I'm not welcome in the preaching. I'm not welcome in the singing. I'm not welcome. And, and, and again, it's all right to, to, to desire good things. And, but maybe our desire good things are maybe different than what God wants us to desire. Remember, I, I, I said at the start, when, 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 Cole, when Cole joined the church, I said many years ago, I prayed for God to send us people. Didn't care who they were, but God cared. And God answered, God said, fine, I'm going to teach you a lesson. You know, God teaches us a lesson. And by the way, when he teaches us a lesson, it hurts oftentimes because we don't listen. And God starts to send us the right people. Now, cool, I believe you're a right person for our church. You're 15 years old, don't have a job, don't tithe, don't nothing. But you know what? You're a 15-year-old man that wants to be closer to God, and that's the right fit. Jim is the oldest member of our church, oldest age-wise. You're 65 years old, uh, uh, not the most physically fit man in this church, uh, uh, not the most ruggedly handsome man in the church. That, belong, that title belongs to me. Um, 
Not the most humble man in the church that belonged. No, I'm, I'm teasing you. Uh, but you know what? If, if you called Jim up at 2.30 in the morning and said, hey, Jim, I need your help. He'd get up he would go and walk over to your house and help you. If I asked Jim, Jim, I need you to walk to London and pick me up a Bible tomorrow, guess what Jim would do? And get me that Bible. I know that. Why? Because he's a faithful man. Sarah, not the uh, most uh, uh, proficient in math. Actually, God called her, I believe God called her to be the financial secretary of this church, I'm sure, as sure as I'm standing here. But <laughs> Sarah, are you good at math? No. Do you hate math? Yes. What do you do for God? Oh, wait a minute. She keeps the books of a church. Here, my Lord, send me. What do you desire? Well, I want. Wait a minute. Is what you want what God wants? You know, we pray, Lord, send, do this. And Lord, give me this. And Lord, give me this. And we forget that little phrase, if it be your will. Lord, if it's your will, can I? Can I? You know, for, for the last couple of weeks, I was praying, Lord, if it's your will, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to do something for somebody. I didn't know what it was. And I'm not going to tell you who it is, but God opened the door for allowing me to do something for somebody. Very special. Not in my family, but just somebody very special. Today I was sitting in my desk and I was praying and I looked over at my, uh, I looked over at my bookshelf and I love Thompson Chain Bible. I, I love a Thompson Chain Bible. They're, they're several hundred dollars. Uh, they're a beautiful Bible. They're Gorgeous Bible. I'm not telling you to get that for me for my birthday coming up in November. But I'm not telling, <laughs> not, not saying that, amen. Uh, I'm teasing you. Um, but I looked on my bookshelf and I saw my Thompson Train Bible and I thought, and immediately God said, Give that to Abigail when she goes, when she gets the date, the moment she gets accepted to college. And you know what? You know what? I, I, my flesh just said, um, that's my Bible. <laughs> uh, that wasn't, the, and I quickly said, get away, flesh. And I immediately, first thing I said to Abigail when we come home, I said, Abigail, come, in, come into my office. And she came into my office and I said, Abigail, when you get the day you get accepted to Bible college, this Bible's yours. And I just told her a little bit about it. And she didn't look on her face. It wasn't like, oh, whatever, Dad. It was, it was like that meant the world to her. And what a, what a wonderful blessing it is to be able to, to, to be obedient to God. By the way, that's all introduction, and i got 12 minutes left. And I've got a whole pile of points. I want to give you a couple points. And again, it's all right to have desires. But you must de determine some things when the desires come. Number one is your desire of the flesh. Again, the word in the Bible, the word desire has many meanings. Uh, it can mean a lust or an appetite. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3, it says, Among whom also uh, we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, the fulfilling, of our, uh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we're by nature children of wrath, even as others. Is your, by, is your desire of the flesh? I'm not going to get into very much theological today. I, I'm not, I'm not, my, my, I'm not oh, I will get into theological. It won't be a, a very much of a detailed message. I'm going to get very to the point tonight. And honestly, the notes that I have, I'm probably going to miss a lot of the notes because I don't believe... Uh, the Lord's leading me into some of the ways because this was written in 2009. Never preached, by the way. But what are your desires? You're on the winning side. You are. If you're saved, you're on the winning side. And you know, all he, all brother, all brother Hudson, all he wanted to do was just to sing. Is your desire fleshly? How do you determine that? By the Word of God. 
And, and by the way, it, it could very much mean that it's, you know, I desire to, 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 to have more people in church, but it could be fleshly because, well, I, I want to brag that I'm the largest church in the world. Or, you know, we've had 200 new visitors, or 200 new people. I, I, you know, people ask me, how many people do you have in church on Sunday? I, don't, I, I Honestly, I don't know. The one, the, the one Sunday night that your, your brother got baptized, we had a lot of visitors. Good, amen, God bless them. But I, I'm so gra- gra- grateful that we did, and, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm, I'm not tr- trying to, you know, eh. but my desire to, to it was, my desire was not, that Sunday night was not to have people in the seats. It was to help Lucas with his walk with God. That was my desire. I did not, ta- or Facebook, one picture of the crowd, I Facebooked one picture of your brother, several pictures of your brother getting baptized because that was what it was all about. A person wants to get married, they'll get married to anybody and they don't want to wait on God because they don't want to, they don't want to, uh, they don't want to, um, they don't desire to, um, Wait on God. They just want somebody to live with. They don't want to be alone anymore. You realize with God, you're never alone. Amen? With God, we're never alone. I'd much rather spend time with God than I would with anybody else, including my wife. Sorry, dear. Serious. Now, I love, you know, when I go on trips, I bug my wife. Oh, I bug the snot out of her. I call her up as often as I can. Hi, honey. I'm so glad I have, I can call when I'm in the States and call like it's a local call. Hey, dear, how are you? I love you. And she goes, you called an hour ago. Shut up, leave me alone. You did say that, dear, so don't you lie. What do you want? You call it again. When I came home, I was running a 102 degree fever. I just wanted to get home to spend time with my wife and kids. I didn't call her. She was wondering what was up. I knocked on the door. I stepped down the hallway. She was, oh, honey, you're home. You look like garbage. <laughs> I feel like garbage. Thank you for noticing. I desired more than anything to be with my wife and children. Where's your desire? Is your desire based on this? Is this what your desire is based on? If I can afford to do it, I'll do it. You know, oh, how many people desire to be more like Jesus? Do you tithe? I'm not talking just your wallet. I'm talking of yourself. You realize Christians who don't tithe do not want to be like God. Do you realize that? They don't. You better tithe. Ananias and Sapphira, Acts chapter 5. Be like, Freddie, I need you to step away from that machine for a second. Just let it go. If it stops, that stops. I don't care. Freddie comes on up here, and uh, we'll say, we'll say Freddie comes in here, and, and Freddie, he sold his house. God bless you. Mm-hmm. And he lies to the Holy Ghost and didn't tithe on it. And an ice and some fire. What happens? He drops dead. Drops dead. So drop dead. Here, you just you, you sit there in that thing, and he's dead. And then Maluka, we, Cole and, and Jim and, uh, uh, and Sarah and, and Abby, they are, because, you know, they're strong, and Becca, uh, they, they grab him, and they take him out, and they bury him. And then uh, an hour later, his wife comes in, and 
Where's Freddy? And she has all her shopping bags. And she dies. She drops dead. What's, what's everything good? What's your money good for now? Nothing. Thank you for Freddy. I'm using Freddy as an example. I could use my wife and I could use you and, 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 and your family. I could use you and I could use you. I could use every one of us. But my dear friends, <laughs> what do you desire? To have the biggest... You know when you're dead, Freddy, you got three daughters. When you die, you and Malou die, they're going to fight over the money. Well, it's in my will. They get, no, they're still going to fight over it. And they get married, their husbands, whoever has the big, biggest, loudest, uh, most arrogant husband... They're going to they're gonna fight hard. I learned that when my mom died. Oh, my dear soul. The, fi the fight is on. The trumpet. Oh, man. <laughs> Hello. There was no trumpet, but the fight was on. What do you desire? Is it fleshly or is it godly? Number two, do you even have any, have any desires? Well, I'm just going to go through life and whatever happens, happens. And there are people like that. Now, you may think this is a dumb question, but it's not. All too often, Christians just sit back and go, well, whatever. Whatever happens. Now, there's a difference. Cole is a very serious guy. If you look, Cole, I've never heard crack a joke. Well, once, I think. Now, I thought it was, you know, it was like, this is Cole. Cole's a very serious guy. That's fine. Being serious is, but do you have a desire? You know, there's times I'm serious, but there's times I like to joke. You know, when it comes to about 9.30 tonight, I'm serious. Girls, I'm going to bed. Don't bug me. Elsie, don't bug me. I'm going to sleep. Angel, don't look at me. Don't breathe on me. Don't rub up against me. I want to go to sleep. Push her off to bed. But my dear friends, we let the cares of this world choke out the right desires. Mark chapter 4, verse 19 says, And the cares of this world and the deceitful of riches and the lust of other things enter in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Well, I want to have them. Oh, again, we're talking about money. Oh, the deceitfulness of riches. I want to have the house, the boat, the car, the, the mansion, and everything else. Now, okay, it's uh, fine, well, and dandy to have a cottage. Freddie has a beautiful cottage. You ever get a chance to go up there? If he ever offers you to go up there, take it. Beautiful cottage. I, honestly, Freddie, in the last several years, that was, that was my, thank you, 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 thank you. I even like them more than the, that, the, that gift to us, more than the chocolate bars you gave us. Amen. God bless you. It's all right to have that. But if that becomes your God, it's all right to have a desire to own a brand new car. If that becomes your God, it's all right to have the latest technologies in a couple, in a, in a, in a month and a half, the new iPhone comes out. Yeah! How many people are going to go get it? Hello! It's all right to have the nice desires. But if that becomes your God, it's all right to want to go to Bible college. But is that your God? Is it all right to have the, 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 the want to be a baseball player? But is that your God? There was a story of a football player. Got millions, a pro football player. Millions and millions of dollars. The night of his signing, he went out, tried heroin for the first time, and died. Didn't even sign, didn't even go to the bank and cash the check. Where to get him? That money was his God. Tim Hortons, everyone know the story of how Tim Hortons died? Tim Hortons bought a fast car. Got a big, got a, signed, signed a big bonus. Got a fast sports car wrapped, uh, go down the QEW, right by where the head office of, Q, of Tim Hortons is. And that's why they built it there. Wrapped his car, uh, went off the road, wrapped his car around the tree, killed himself. Where'd that get him? Nowhere. Do you have a desire? Do you just roll with the punches? Do you stop caring for people's souls? Do you stop caring for the ministry God gave you? Yes, I said the ministry God gave you. God gave each and every one of us a ministry. Cole, you have a ministry. 
You're 15 years old, just joined our church. You have a ministry. What did you just do? Well, I took up the offering, and there wasn't many envelopes in there, but you took up an offering. Do you know what? You, re you gave an opportunity for people to partner with God. God looks down and goes, ah, it's okay. I'm pretty cool with him. That should make our hearts sing whenever you get to do something for the Lord. And Lisa gets to play a piano. Uh, Abigail gets to teach, soon gets to teach children. Sarah gets to teach the young ones. My wife gets to teach the young ones. Whatever God has asked you to do, you better do. Even if he says, give everything to me. Oh, by the way, he does. And he lets us live off of 90% of it. You rob from God, God may just take everything from you. What is your desire? Number three, if you have the wrong desires, how do you get the right desires back? If you have the wrong desires, how do you get the right desires back? This may sound easy, but it may not be. You know, you can be in the right place at the wrong time. You'll be at the right church, but at the wrong time. You can be at the right event, but at the wrong time. Is it wrong to go to a Blue Jays game? Cool? No? It's not. Is it wrong if it's on a Thursday night or a Sunday night? Why? Yep. Absolutely it is. Well, I could have went to the Blue Jays game this afternoon, yeah. But what would you, uh, coming, back, this coming back tonight, what would you have thought of? Man, what a walk-off home run. I'm so glad I was there for that ninth inning. And you would have, uh, I, I would have been Charlie Brown's teacher tonight. Wah, 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 wah. You, you got cable. You can watch the Blue Jays in 30 tonight. It's okay. Hey, the last... 20 minutes of it was the best, best part of the game. The Blue Jays come back. But if you have the wrong desires, how do you get the right desires back? Number one, by spending time in God's Word. And I like our text again. It says here, and it says, Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever th you know, uh, uh, what things soever ye desire when ye pray. Second thing is you need to pray, and you need to ask God to put the right desires in your heart. And then you need to, number three, turn to God. Turn to God. Psalms 51, verse 7 to 10 says, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. You know what? He'll renew the right spirit. That means desire. You ever broke? How many people? Have you ever broken a bone? Yeah. What bone did you break? I think it might have been my shin bone. Your shin bone. When it broke and it healed properly, is it stronger? Yeah. It is. Why? Because it, they put that. God puts the calcium buildup, and sometimes you know God needs to break. Our bones, not physically, but spirit, and sometimes phys physically, but spiritually, he needs to break us. You ever, if I ever preached a message, or you ever heard a message, and God broke you spiritually? I remember one time I was preaching, and God broke. I I wrote the sermon. I don't know. If, I don't know, if, uh, Sarah. I think you were here for that, Jim. I think you were here for that, Freddie. I, you might have been here for that. And halfway through the message, I said, "I got to stop." God broke me spiritually. Were you here for that, Freddie? Yeah. God broke me. And he revealed something in my life that I needed to correct quickly. And I stopped. I prayed. I got it correct. I said, Lord, I, I'm going to take a, just a couple seconds here at this point in time. And sometimes when, when uh, I remember the first time I preached only a, I think it was a 17-minute message. And Sarah, Sarah looked at me like, that it? It had to be it because God broke me.
God said, you, you, you better stop. You need to get, I was, I was in the middle, mid point. And God said, no, you need to get that right with him, with me. We need to get our eyes off of us and get our eyes upon God. Hebrews 12, 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Look unto Jesus. You didn't die for yourself. But you can die to yourself. You understand what I'm saying? You ain't God. You're put on, if you're saved here tonight, you're here to serve God. Is your desire to serve God? We ought to desire God's word. Number four, what should we desire? A, again, number one, uh, desire God's word. As newborn babes in Christ, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby, 1 Peter 2.2. 2. We ought to desire spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 14.1. We ought to desire spiritual growth in others. Philippians 4, 17. I like this. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. You know what, Cole? That was my desire for you. This is the first day I met you. The first day we sat down. The first day when you wrote that, when you did your first challenge in RU. That was my desire. You know why? Because that's what God wants. When you joined this, this afternoon, man, I got to get all excited. I had a Baptist fit. I was like, yes! No, put a hedge of protection around him. Don't have him change his mind. And I think if you waited to next week, your mind would have changed. But you know what God looks down in heaven and goes, I'll help him this week. You say, just joined a little local church. That's okay. That's a step. Your brother getting baptized, that was encouraging. Your mom joining the church two weeks ago, that was encouraging. Why? Uh, hey, by the way, you going down to your knees this morning, somebody went down to their knees, and I know who it was. Man, I'll tell you something. God's working. God's working. Sarah's dad. Amen, sir? I remember when he went in, he was in, he, he was in um uh, having his leg amputated, and I and I, and I went through the plan. I, went, I tried to go through the plan of salvation. He threatened to bodily harm on me. But now he's listening. Now he's listening. Wow. God is good, isn't he? We ought to desire the second coming of Christ. Oh, Lord, come back quickly. And I like this last point, and I guess everybody needs to desire this. Just to be used of God. Just to be used of God. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, this is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good thing. Now, I know that's talking about a pastor. But we ought to desire just to be used of God. Now I belong to Jesus, and Jesus belongs to me. How do we keep the right desires? Number five, my last point, and I'm done. Stay in the right, stay in the right desires. If God gives you a right desire, stay in it. Was your desire to join our church? Then stay in the church. Don't go half in, half out. Just stay in. Go whole hog. You like pulled pork sandwich? You ever had Strode's? Oh, brother. Mm. You ever had Strode's pulled pork? Man, it'll make you want to slap your mama getting on your chin. It's so good. With the, with the slaw. You got to have the slaw on You have the slaw on it? Oh, man, so good. You try to take that from me, I will bite your arm. I, I'm serious. I won't slap your arm. I will, oh, sorry. I will bite your arm. I'm salivating already. I wish, I wish Strode's was open right now. I spit on my daughter. Sorry, dear. I will bite your arm. I desire that. Are we going to Strode's tomorrow night after? <laughs> Amen. But my dear friends, what do you desire? 
God called you here for a reason. God called every member here for a reason. And that you ought to be in the right, stay in the right desires. Number two, stay in prayers. Stay in prayer. Bible says pray without ceasing. In everything, by prayer and supplication. Pray, pray, pray. And number three, don't worry about the cares of this world and the deceitful riches. Worry about God and what he wants for you. Folks, again, don't make your, desire, don't make your decisions based on your bank account. I like what Lillian Wilson said. If God called Abigail to Faithway, come and God will take care of the city. Take care of the finances. We had to come up with $635 a month for her room and board. Amen, Abby? Abby, do you make $635 a month at least? A paycheck. Every two weeks. So God takes care of it. But my dear friends, hey, listen to me. If where God guides, he always provides. Am I worried about Abigail going to Bible college next, uh, next, <laughs> next month? Nope. Finances, God will, God, God will work the finances out. Mm-hmm. You know, when we, when we bought our van, not once did I say, well, I wonder if we could afford it. Not once. I got to come up with $200 every two weeks. I don't know. Honestly, I've never checked to see if our our van payments come out. My wife says she has and they do, but it doesn't bother me. I don't worry about money. I didn't worry, okay, could I afford six large McDonald's drinks today? I felt led of the Lord. It's not horrible. It was led of the Lord. But I didn't care if it was affordable or not. It's, it's wicked over here. It's just it's wicked over here. I didn't worry about I'm not worried about, okay, can I afford to send my kids to camp? I prayed. They want to go, but I prayed. Did you guys pray about going to camp? Is it God's will? Then fork the money over. I'm t- God will provide. Why? Where God guides, he always provides. And my last point tonight, I can wrap it all up, this whole thing. I'm going to be done. You need to memorize this verse because it will change your life. You want, you want a life-changing verse? How many people want a life-changing verse? You Sure. Because it will give you the right desire every time. I don't know if you do. I really don't. You want it? Okay, one person wants it. How many else wants that, this life-changing verse? We got two. Anybody else? Freddie, you want this life-changing verse? Amen. Jim? Turn your Bibles to Psalm 51. Oh, it's a life-changing verse. I know it changed my life when I read it. If you have a pen, I suggest you underline it. You got a pen, Cole? All right. Verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Is that your desire today? Underline it, star it, circle it, put an arrow on it, memorize it, whatever. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Is that your desire tonight? I hope it is. I really do. You know why? Because that's God's desire for your will and your life. You know, I don't care where my children go to Bible college. I've got one daughter that wants to go to Faithway. Amen. 
I've got three daughters that want to go to Hiles Anderson. Amen. If God wanted them to go to Hiles Anderson, Philippines, would I like it? Yeah. Not because I don't get to spend time with them. You know, um, can I confess to you guys? I was not overly happy that Abigail can't come home on weekends for her freshman year. I was not overly happy. Actually, I was downright angry. I was downright upset. My flesh, I said, who do they think they are? This is my daughter. And you know what God said? Who do you think you are? That's my child. Oh, I felt, it was like, oh. I actually literally, when, I, when God said that in my heart, I actually felt weak. And I had to say, okay, God, you gave her to me for 18 wonderful, glorious years. I've done the best I can with her. And I know she's going to do well. Am I going to miss her? Am I going to miss you, Abby? I, I'll miss her to the death. Sarah won't have anybody to lean on. She'll have to, Becca, you'll have to go over here now. Hannah, you'll have, she has longer with you. But I'll miss her. I said, God created me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. But we went on two, Thursday to Faithway, uh, Thursday morning. I'm like walking around going, Abigail will do fine here. And God says, I know. That's why I called her here. Now shut up and sign and shut up and pay the fifty dollars for the application fee. That was the best fifty dollars I ever spent in my life. More than the money, more than the twenty bucks I spent on Elsie's engagement ring. <laughs> These nice, but she doesn't wear it anymore. <sighs> she ruined the first one. <sighs> when God creates in you a clean heart, you can't help but to say, okay. Is that your desire tonight? What wouldn't you do for God? I'm letting go of my oldest, my oldest gal. Not my favorite, because I don't have any favorites. But I'm letting old, I, who am I going to tease about being a Pittsburgh Penguin fan when they lose? They haven't lost the, they, they haven't lost the Stanley Cup in two years. Who am I? I still can call her. She may not answer my call. I still can text her. She may delete my text. I know she's not. But is your desire just to be more like Christ? And those around you to be more like Christ? If God called my daughters to Hiles Anderson, Philippines or Africa where they call, call them to the mission field to some faraway country where I would never physically see them again would I not would I, in my flesh I would say Lord don't do that but in my desire be like Lord help them to, to help people to be more like you that's what we need to desire. Is that your desire tonight?